you all, any of you have jobs outside of the band? I teach preschool. I work in a bank. I don't anymore, but these two guys. Mm. Chris um, donates sperm. Sean cuts hair for a living. Dennis sells his ass on Bourbon Street. And I um, have sex with old, older women, basically, to um, supplement my income. Um, so if any old, older women are seeing this, uh, you can get in touch with me probably, you know, through some of the people that did this, this videotape or something, and maybe we could get something arranged, you know, or I could make, we could both be satisfied. If anybody's put off by this, especially you guys out there, all the girls that are standing around there and their boyfriends are like put off by this, they're probably wearing women's underwear underneath their shit too. That's all I gotta say. We needed a name for this band that we were doing and uh, we had a show coming up and um, they asked us basically, you know, well, what should we call you? And um, so we, you know, we got together on that one and like sat around for a while and came up with, with this nipples concept, nipples of, and uh, we couldn't decide on the ISIS part, on, on the, the last part of it, so we decided to be ambiguous, um, which is a large part of our music, ambiguity. of all these bad experiences mixed with the ecstatic experiences simultaneously. Our music is, is uh, heavily derived from uh, all of the sounds that we hear in, this, in the streets. There's always so many different sounds of rhythms and horns and screams and rapes and murders and there's just all this junk. Basically, uh, I suppose we're trying to develop an alternative to the alternative uh, music that's happening right now. It's a compilation of all the music that we've uh, mustered up over the last year or so. Um, from playing live uh, and sort of trying to do that and, and keep the live feel to it. Yeah, we're, we we're still doing it live, but also add a few uh, extra studio bonuses. <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to offer people something different, something, uh, something real, something. Um, something that is not being given to them right now because they want it.
know. There's not that many bands here that seem to bring in that many crowds, other than the typical R&B, jazz, funk, whatever. Personally, I think they're tougher crowds than other crowds. Once yeah, they yeah, like you, they so like also. you better than anybody in the world. New Orleans crowds, I mean, as, as a general difference, they're latecomers. That's like the, the most honest like difference between here and there. They're all latecomers, they all get out late. They stay late too. There is an alternative music scene in New Orleans, or a pop music scene, if, if you want to call it that, in New Orleans. It's not just uh, blues and soul, it's a lot more. Musically, I mean, I've, I've heard New Orleans music all my life. I've listened to, to it, but no, no real uh, obvious impact, really. I'm not really against it, just, um, I don't know, I was never really big on the New Orleans thing. <laughs> when we went to New York, we like hung out at some clubs and checked out like some New York musicians and they were just phenomenal and they pretty much, they just blew us away with their abilities and their talents and all they could say was how they would die and go to New Orleans and study music in New Orleans and, and listen to all the, the cats in New Orleans play on Bourbon Street or whatever and it just, that blew us away because to us the epitome of music in, in the United States was, was New York at that point in time and it was just... It's funny to hear that, that they all wanted to come to New Orleans, so. Grass is always green. Exactly. Yeah.